I don't. I think I did German for like, when I was 13, for a week. I was no good. Hello. Hello, yeah, it's almost the same. <laughs> so, what, what is C3PO in German? What, what he's called? C3PO. 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 Yeah. Hi. Yeah, so it sounds martial. It, 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 it does, actually, and a slight technical thing with the dubbing into German. It's very hard for a character who speaks like this and is slightly sort of actually rather oriental, Japanese in his manner. It doesn't quite, quite uh, correlate to, to the German language, which is, is harsher. But nevertheless, we all know how popular Star Wars is in Germany, so keep it up. And you've been here quite often already yeah. for different things, and, and you are all over the world, tours and yes. stuff and concerts. Yes. How much of your life has the Golden Rod taken over, actually? An interesting question. Were I to add it together, there were chunks when I do nothing else, and then there uh, is chunks that uh, is any, anything other than Star Wars. But over the last 37, 38 years of my life, pretty much every year, at least I have done something to do with, with him, and often many, many things. And he has taken me literally to Russia, to Australia, to Japan, right across America, and so on. The only place 3P has not appeared is in India, and uh, I don't know why that is, so we'll have to think about that. But you know, as a passport to travel and friendship, he's pretty good. Um, some are, they, they end up being the same. Um, yes, it's a good question, and actually when I think about it, they, they are the same because um, Star Wars is such a common subject that the sort of people who like it are the same sort of people across the world, do you see? And because it's, it's not a language thing, it, it's an image thing, it's a story thing, they have this common interest, and it, it sort of gives them a, a communality of, of attitude, so they love it. Any human being is different from another human being. He may be more excitable than she is, but the enthusiasm is what's there. And the belief in the story is so important, the suspension of disbelief that allows you to think, oh, that's not really happening, they're not real Ewoks, whatever. We all need to suspend, we have to suspend disbelief when we see a movie, and that's what everybody does. And something like this then allows you to put that suspension away and to meet face to face. You come to a Star Wars celebration, you meet actors who have been employed to give their time to create something that you the audience have enjoyed. But now you can say, oh, you were there, you know. It's another side to uh, the reality. And I get the feeling that you're never getting tired of the contact with the fans. What, what does it give you? I don't do a lot of public appearances because I don't want to become tired of meeting the fans. I don't want to become bored. I don't want them to become bored with me. So for me, coming to Star Wars Celebration is special. For them too, I think. Um, but if I did this every week, I'd go, oh, I can't be bothered. You know, I would lose enthusiasm. And that wouldn't be good. So I kind of save it up a bit. And then it's fun because I hear people's stories of what it meant to them the first time to see it. Maybe their father took them to see it. He's not alive anymore, but they can remember him every time they... And little stories like this are heartwarming. And then now I see the grandparents are bringing the children and they're bringing the grandchildren and they will come in a family and they will share this story. So for me it's quite remarkable to be a part of a giant story and still still here. Okay, sorry. So just very shortly, you've been in all six films so far. Would it be up for another three? I don't know. My mind is open. It didn't used to be open, but then I learned that's pretty dumb. You should never you should never close your mind to opportunities, whatever they are. And how do you explain that people love Boba Fett, a character that's basically defined by never taking off his helmet in the old trilogy? How did he become such an icon? Well, I, I think he, he doesn't care about most people, maybe one or two, and he's exceptionally dangerous. So you don't, but he's also a fun character. He'll, he has actually got time for a joke. He would tell the odd gag in the language Mandalorian. He would tell a funny story, and he'll just. But he's always on guard. People are after him all the time. So 
his, uh, his cool character. How do you go about creating such a character that's well, never taking off the mask? Clear. I don't think it's not, it's not creating, it's luckily playing with the character because you have this picture of him, so you don't have to do too much. The suit, just wisping, wisping the, the shoulder piece here, the lovely cape, as he wisp, that's you're just using a prop to make him look like quite a dangerous character. So you never felt, honestly, on stage a little bit silly in that costume? It was always cool. No, no, I just walked through. The first day I was coming up to, to film and I walked through like this and all you had were people turning their head going with their mouth open. So that must have been something. They must have thought, well, the costume looks fantastic. Who's that guy? Because no one had a clue. There was no... I didn't know his proper name when I was cast. But, um, you know, finally they said, oh, well... Well, welcome aboard, Jeremy. It's only a couple of days, but thanks for being here. And I thought, you mean I've got it? I don't have to speak? Don't have to do it? That, that was it. Looking forward to the um, Boba Fats, all of you on stage? Oh, yeah, the Fats. That, that should be a hoot. That'll be funny. Well, I hope so. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.